Hello everyone, this is Mike and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the different kinds of table joins uh, with KQL in Azure. Uh, so we're going to look at the, uh, the join operator, uh, talk about the different flavors of table joins, and lastly, uh, some examples of using joins in Azure. So, so let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so let's first of all talk about what the join operator represents. So when we look at doing joins, we're basically merging tables together. So, so the technical definition, if you look it up in Microsoft's documentation, is merges the rows of two tables to form a new table by matching the values of the specified columns from each table. So in essence, given some type of common, uh, common value in a column, I want to pull the rows from different tables and have kind of a new output table be built from that. So you're kind of grabbing pieces from different tables based on some, let's say, property that's common between the two. Now for doing this in, in KQL, uh, you first of all specify, you know, whatever table you want to output first, and that kind of becomes known as like your left table. Uh, then you pipe that over to the join operator and then say what you want the other table you want to uh, compare against. So that would be referred to as, in essence, your, your table on the right or your right table. And then whatever column you want them to uh, match on. Okay, so in this case, this is kind of assuming that both table A and table B both have some column that has the same name to it, like whether it's, you know, like the user's column, the computer's column, something is the same between the two tables. Now, what if it isn't? What if I want to compare on a column that's named one thing in table A and named something different in table B? Uh, well, then this example would come in here where you can declare the, the join you want to do in the two tables. Again, this would still be the left table. This would be the right table. Um, and then you can call out some variables that are defined in KQL automatically. So dollar left would be referencing table A, and dollar right would be referencing table B. And then this would be the name of the column. So in this case, I have a column called key. Uh, that would be referenced between the two. Okay? Now, when you're doing these, this type of syntax here, uh, you're basically using a specific flavor of join. And I'll talk about flavors in a moment here. Uh, but if you want to, you can also specify the flavor of join you want to use. Right? So, so the default, if you don't specify, is doing something called inner unique but there's a lot of other joins that are possible. We'll go through each of them in a moment here, okay? So like in this last syntax example, you can see that I'm specifying an inner join rather than an inner unique, but that could just as easily be um, some other join, like if I want to do, um, let's say, a, a full outer join or, you know, something like that. So you could specify what you want the join to be if you don't want to use the default of inner unique. So in that vein here, you know, what are we talking about when we look at join flavors? So there's a few of them that are available here. So, so this is kind of a, a layout of them kind of all down to the, um, um, all down to the left side uh, that you can see. And so first of all, we'll start off with uh, the default. So if you do not specify a join flavor, you're getting inner unique. And what inner unique does is it matches one row from the left table. Okay, so again, in, in my example here, uh, this would be the left table and this would be the right table. So the table you're kind of outputting before you use the join operator, that's always going to be your left table. And then the table you're calling when you use the join operator, that's going to be your right table, right? So this is going to be left and this is going to be right. <laughs> so just kind of think of it as when you're looking at it in, in the, the command syntax, the table that comes first, that's your left table, and the table that comes after the join command, that's your right table, right? Or the join operator, I should say. 
Okay, so so the left table, you only are going to get one matching uh, value on whatever property or whatever column you tell it to, to join on. And then you get all of the matches from the right table. Right? So you get one value from the left and all the values from the right. Right now, if you might be thinking, well, what if I want it the other way? Well, then you manipulate which table is the left table, which table is the right table. Right, so you kind of have that decision, if you will. Uh, there's no law that says table B has to be the right table and table A has to be the left table. You could easily just flop those around if you wanted to. Right now, if you want all of the matches from both of the tables, uh, that would be an inner join. Okay, so again, you'd have to specify that because uh, that's not the default. Inner unique is the default. So you could do an inner join. Um, now, what if I want all of the other records in those tables, uh, not just the ones that matched? So you could do a full outer. Okay, so what a full outer does is that records or returns all the records from the left and right tables, unmatched cells contain null value. So it'll grab everything from uh, both tables. And if, if there's not a match, uh, the, the records will just be empty, right? Uh, for left outer, returns all the records from the left table and only the matching ones from the right. A right outer returns all the records from the right table and only matching records from the left. A left anti returns all the records from the left that don't have matches from the right. Okay, so left anti is going to look at both tables based on whatever column you tell it to pay attention to and just return um, the ones in the left table that don't have a match in the right. Right? And right anti is just the opposite of that. So it returns all the records from the right table that don't have matches from the left. Uh, and you have left semi, returns all the records from the left table that have matches from the right. And right semi returns all the records from the right table that have matches from the left. Okay? So to kind of have a look at an example of this, let's go ahead and uh, flip over to my uh, demo environment here. And again, I'm using the Azure freely available um, log analytics or you know, KQL demo environment, which you can find at aka.ms forward slash LA demo. Uh, so anybody can go ahead and log into that and with an Azure account, uh, with an Azure AD account, and that will give you this uh, this Custo query interface here that has live data provided to it. So if you don't necessarily want to practice on your own environment, this uh, this KQL demo environment could be used for uh, for your purposes, right? So in here, um, I have defined a couple tables. Right? Now they're not the most complex tables in the world. Uh, but we're just trying to keep it simple here to basically understand what joins are doing for you. Okay, so if you overcomplicate it, it's kind of a pain to, to see what each table is kind of bringing, if you will. Uh, so in here, let me, um, uh, let me go ahead and zoom this up a little bit here. Uh, so we could see, uh, for instance, oops, do that. Uh, we can see, for instance, here I'm creating uh, a table that I'm going to call the left table, and it's going to have two columns in it. Uh, one's going to call be key, and one's going to be called value value one. And for the key, uh, I have values A, B, C, uh, B going twice, and I've just given them just a, a simple string value one, two, three, and four. And then I have a table I've created called the right table. Um, and again, that has two columns to it. Well, the first column is key, and the second column is called value two. And so uh, this is the key column right here, and then this is the value two column right there, which again, just uh, just letters and some numbers, right? So if I want to output those, uh, let's say for instance, I want to see left table. I can just type in my query editor here, uh, left table, I can even tab completed if I want, and then run the query. 
and then I could see the output of that table right here. Okay, so that is the left table. Let me bring that up here. There we go. So you could see this right here is making this this table down here. Okay. Um, so two columns, key and value one. Okay. And now if I want to see the right table, let's just change the left to right, run it again. And there's the output for my right table. All right. So again, you got the key and you have the value. All right. So now let's say I want to actually do some joining here. All right. So so let's say um, let's start with uh, left table. We'll be uh, taking the role of the table on the left, and we want to do a join. So we'll take that, pipe it over to join. Uh, join, we're going to join on the right table. Okay. And I need to do, um, I want to tell it what, uh, what column I want to match on. So in this case, I want to tell it I'm going to match on the key column that's in both tables. Okay. So by not specifying the join, remember I'm doing an inner unique. Okay, so that's what we're up to here. Um, so we go ahead and run that, and we can see what the results are here. Now, just for uh, you know, um, I don't know, clarity purposes here, I have kind of a picture that I've taken of both of the tables uh, that I'm just going to prop up um, over here. And let me take the demo environment. Let's get a little more screen real estate here. Let's collapse the. Uh, the the schema and the filter section here bring this picture back to the foreground okay? and then we can kind of see what uh what the join actually did here so let's maybe leave that like right there all right so anyway so if we look here um again this is an inner unique okay so we told it to match up on key that okay? is what we uh what we told it to match up on so that would be these columns right here or what they are attempting to match up on. All right. Now, if we um, if we look here, what are the matches? Well, in left table, right, uh, which is kind of the again the table on the left, if you will, uh, we could see if we look at this uh, this row uh, that has the key of A, uh, that does not exist over on the right. All right. So there's no A match. All right. So that's why you don't see that in the results down here. Uh, and if you look on the right table, there's a value D, and notice that's not in the left, right? Uh, so that's why you don't see that down in the results. So what you do see in the results is you see one instance of B, right? So, so it took uh, B right here, matched it up with B right here, right? And what are the values? Well, B over here, that's a value of 2. Right? So if you kind of look there, it kind of grabbed that. And then uh, it also has a value of 10 over here, and that's where it grabbed that. Right? So, so you got the value 2 that came from the right table and value 1 that came from the left table uh, for, this, uh, for this value of B. It also does give you the matching value on the opposite side, so they call that key one there. So that's kind of a generated column. You could get rid of it if you didn't want it in the output, for instance. All right. Now, uh, notice B also has another entry here, but it's not shown in the output because we're doing an inner unique join. So that means you only get one matching result from the left table. Okay, so even though there's two Bs over here and one B over here uh, in the right table, uh, you're only going to get one matching from that left table. So only one matching out of those. Okay? So now we look at the next here, we could see there's, there's the match on this, the, the letter C. And that, let me kind of blank out my, my animation here and redraw. You can see over here, there is a letter C over here. Okay, and there's two letter C's over here. So notice the first one, uh, notice C in the left table is a value of four. So you see that there and there. 
and then over here on the right table, C has a value of 20 and 30. And so that's why you get two results here, uh, same value coming from the left table, but the two different values coming from the right table. So hence two rows of output because there's two matches on the right table. Okay, and then that overall gives me my inner unique join. Okay? Now, what if though, um, in my case, I do have a column uh, in common between the two tables, right? I have a key column over here and I have a key column over here. So what if, uh, what if that was not the case? I could alter uh, the join that I'm doing here and specify um, those variables. So if I do dollar uh, left dot uh, key, and again, be, be aware of the key sensitivity, that's a capital K, um, equals, and then dollar right dot key. Okay? And if we notice here, if we run this, that'll give me the, uh, the same result here. So if your columns are different and the different tables that you want to match up on, you can call each column that you want. Uh, left would be uh, dollar left would be referencing the left table or the table on the left, and dollar right would be referencing the right table or the table on the right. And then key, again, would be the properties uh, in those tables, whatever the columns are. So I want the key column from the left table and the key column from the right table, okay, if you wanted to do that. So that's just kind of a different way of, of calling this, if you will. Okay. Uh, but if again, if the two tables have the same column name and that's what you want to compare against for doing the join, uh, you could just put the, the property like so. Okay. Now let's do um, a different kind of join. So, so we saw the output here. This was inner unique. Uh, so let's do just an inner join. So we can uh, come up here, go to join, uh, type in kind equals inner space and then the, the whatever table you want to use on the right all right so that will do an, um, an inner join now and if i go ahead and run this uh, we can see that all of the matches from both sides of the tables show up right, let me bring my picture back up here so we can see the tables and notice that uh, if we look here in the output we get two B rows because there's two of them in the left table and they match up to one B entry on the right table. So that's why if you notice they both have the value of 10 uh, because there's only one entry on the right table but there's two entries on the left, two or three, right? So that's why you see those values there, okay? And then on, we got two matches on C. Uh, so notice one of them came from the left table and two of them came from the right table. So that's why on the left table, it's a value of four. So that's why you see four uh, for, for both of the C entries. And then on the right table, you have 30 and 40. And so that's why, oops, I'm sorry, not 30 and 40, that's C and D, uh, 20 and 30. So that's why you see 20 and 30 over here. So all together, we got four matches total, okay, when we're doing an inner join, okay? Now, again, there are other join flavors we could do. Uh, so if I want all of the stuff from both of the tables, I can do a full outer. Um, so we could go ahead and run that. And notice that gives me um, everything, right? So here's the matches, okay? And then um, on the right table, there's the D match that's not included on the left. And on the left table, there's the A match that's not included on the right, okay? And notice for the value from the opposite table, see how it's blanked out. Okay, so notice on, on the D entry, uh, this came from the right table. Uh, you can see there's no value one, okay, because value one exists in the left table, okay? 
And if we look at the A value, that's coming from the left table. Um, so its value is one. So you see that, that literally the word one. And it does not have a matching uh, result on the right table. So that is left blank, right? And then you see, again, no matching column on the right, okay? So that would be a full outer. It returns all the records from the left and right tables. Unmatched, um, unmatched columns will contain null values. Now, you could also pick which tables you want the full output from. So if I do a right outer, uh, that would allow me to, let's do this, um, a right outer, uh, that would just grab all of the values from the right table um, and only the matching from the left table, right? So if you notice here, notice how D is making an appearance um, and A is not, okay? So A exists in the left table, but we're doing a right outer. So we want all of the, all of the data from the right table and only the matching ones from the left table. Okay, so again, what do we mean by that? Well, in the right table, it has keys of B, C, and D. Okay? And on the left table, it has just B and C. Okay? So, so A is out because it doesn't have a match in the right table. Okay, so that would be a right outer. Everything from the right table, okay? everything from the right table, um, and only the matching results from the left table, okay? Now, let's change this to left outer and run it, and it's gonna be the opposite. You're gonna get all of the matches from the left table, so that's why A is included here, and only the matching values from the right, okay? So that's why D is left, uh, why D is left out, because it does not have a match in the left table, okay? Um, so that would be my, uh, my left outer flavor, okay? Now, um, so let's do, since we're on left here, let's do a left anti-join and see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and run to that. And notice what shows up, okay? Just the A result, because again, what's a left anti? It grabs all of the uh, rows from the left that don't have matches from the right table. So show me all the rows from the left table, all of the rows from the left table that don't have a match on the right table. And in this case, that would be just this row uh, with the key of A, all right? So this one right here. All right, so that's the only one that doesn't exist in the right table. So that's what a left anti does. Okay, just show me what doesn't exist in the other table based on the key value or the key column, I should say. Now for left anti, there's also going to be right anti. And if we look at this again, uh, what's it showing? Just show me the rows from the right table that do not have a match on the left table. And so that's why we see just the D value there, right? Uh, so that's left and right anti. Uh, so then we have semi. So let's just do right semi uh, to start with here. Let's go ahead and run that. And so let's put the table back up, the two tables back up. And what do we see? So with a right semi, it's returning all the records from the right table that have matches from the left. So all the records from the right table that have matches in the left, but it's not returning info from the left table at all. It's just using it as a matchup. Okay, so I just want to see the right output, but only if it had a match in left. Okay, so in this case, we could see like uh, B on the right, yep, that's got a match on the left. C on the right, yep, that has a match on the left. C on the right, that has a match on the left. And D on the right, that does not have a match from the left. So that's not shown. So that's why we see just this output right here. 
and the values are only coming from, again, the right table. All right? So, so that's your right semi. And lastly, we have left semi, which, you know, it's just the opposite of right semi. So a left semi return all the records from the left table that have matches from the right table. So again, if we look at our output, we could see um, on the left table, um, so there's a value of A, and that doesn't exist over on the right table. So that's out. Uh, B, yep, that has a match over here. Cool. B, that has a match over here again. And C, that has a match over here as well. So that's why we see this output. And again, it's only grabbing the rest of the table from the left table. It's not grabbing any stuff from right table at all. We're just using right table to match against. So show me everything from the left table and only uh, properties from, or only columns from the left table that do not have matches on the right table. All right. Okay, so that kind of goes through my different, uh, my different flavors of joins, right? Um, so talking about the, the inner unique, which is the default one, inner, full outer, left outer, right outer, left anti, right anti, left semi, right semi. Okay, so the same ones you saw in the PowerPoint that I just that I threw up at the beginning of the video here, all right? Now, let's say, though, we want to uh, maybe use some of this, you know, like, like why would I want to use some of this, right? So basically, in uh, your, your Azure environment, there's going to be, depending on how much information you're sending into um, a log analytics workspace, or how much info is in Sentinel, or um, Defender for 365, you know, any of those areas where you can do KQL queries. Um, one of the things that you'll discover is not every table that you might want to query might have every bit of information you want out of it. Okay, so like let's say for instance, um, let's say I'm playing around with, I don't know, a security event, let's say. Okay, so I was playing around with that one in my last video here. So I've got security event. Um, and if I look at, at kind of the schema of that, you, know, you can see what columns are available here, right? Um, so, you know, like all of the information that's in here. And I mean, granted, it, there's a lot in this table. The security event table has a lot of stuff in it, but it does not potentially have every piece of info that might be valuable to me. Right? Uh, it just doesn't, right? So let's say I wanted to... Um, uh, combine that with maybe, um, oh, what might be another one here? Um, how about, uh, do I have the heartbeat table? Uh, yeah, I do. I do have. So that's under log management. So, so like, for instance, the heartbeat table has uh, information about the individual devices, like maybe the... Uh, the the operating system type and the version and stuff like that and so maybe i want to combine those two together to get more detailed info about devices let's say so, so let me open up a fresh editor here and let's kind of query um security event all right so we want the the security event table and uh, let's say I want to find where, you know, failed logins have happened. So, so let's do where uh, event ID um, equals and 4624 are successful logins and 4625 would be failed logins. All right. So let's just go ahead and uh, run to that. And the range here is set for last 24 hours. So I'm fine with that uh, as long as I get some results here. Okay, so that gives me some results, uh, 334 results to be exact. And what I what I want to see is maybe let's do um, summarize uh, by uh, computer. Okay, so let's see. Um, it only gives me one result here. Uh, it's not really much of a join. 
Uh, let's see. Let's maybe bump this out to seven days. And let's see. Okay, so that gives me two results. Um, how about... Um, let's see. Let's maybe put this out a little further here. Um, so let's say, let's get rid of the summarize for a moment. And let's run this again. Uh, okay, let's do this. How about a security event where time generated is greater than, let's say, um, let's say a go. Um, what might be good here? So that was seven days. How about 30 days? Okay, so um, so in this case, I'm now running that, um, and that should give me a lot more results, and hopefully, should give me more computers. Man, I only got three out of it. Okay, I guess three it is. <laughs> so could make it go a lot further, I guess. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe. Just, let's see. Okay, so now I got five computers that have had a failed login against them. Okay, so I guess that's, that's what we'll go with. Okay, so that's kind of the first part. So now this would kind of represent the left side or the left table, right? I've got a bunch of computers. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to... Um, grab output uh, from the tables on on the right, um, from a table on the right, so or from another table, let's say. It's not the table on the right yet. So let's say, for instance, like I just have the heartbeat table, right? Um, and let's just grab uh, I don't know, limit 10, just to get a sampling of what it looks like. And so notice it also has a computer column and what I'm looking for here is maybe things like the OS type. Like I want to know for the computers that had a failed login, were they Windows or Linux? Um, and maybe what version of Windows or Linux they were, right? So, so what is that? OS type and version, okay? So, so let's say that's what I want to do. So I don't need all of these duplicate results on the tables on the right. Because notice, I mean, I could get multiple coming back here. So I only want, let's say, one result uh, for each computer. So that would be like a summarize as well. Um, so, so with heartbeat here, let's do summarize. Um, now in the summarize, I want to bring back a couple properties. Because if, if I just do summarize by computer, uh, you'll notice um, I get, what is it, uh, 69 results coming back here. Um, uh, and uh, so, yeah, so I do have the computer, but I don't have any other properties like OS type and version that I want, right? So, so this would be good, don't get me wrong, because it's only showing you know, one unique value uh, for all of the results in heartbeat. So only, you know, the computer names are only showing up once, but I want more information from them. So what I could do is I could do summarize any um, and then do parentheses and I want OS type and version by computer. So if I go ahead and run this now, um, again, I still get the same results. So, you know, it's still 69 results that come back. Uh, but in this case, I now have um, the properties that I want. It kind of tacked as any onto it, which I guess you could fix up doing a project, but we won't in this case. We'll just leave it as uh, those two values. Okay, so now we want to uh, do our join here. So I want, you know, this query right here. 
and I want to combine it uh, with this heartbeat information that has OS type and version. So basically, this will be my left table, and I want to join it with this right table on computer. So hopefully, they're going to have the matches here. So these values on the left table should appear in the table on the right. All right? And then we're going to grab that additional information there. Right? So let's go ahead and put that um, as a join. Okay, so, so let's go ahead here. We'll do, um, uh, so that's going to be outputting our left stuff. And then we'll do join. Um, and I'm just going to copy this information right here. All right. Um, let's kind of do something like this. Now, I want this to kind of be kind of wrapped up, right? So, so I'm not saying, you know, this, this whole thing kind of represents the table on the right. So the security event represents the table on the left because it's everything that comes before the join. And now this is the table on the right. And what property do we want to match up on? What column do we want to match up on? We're going to do computer, right? Um, and let's see. Oh, I did a buy. Sorry, I always do that. I mess up buy and on all the time. Um, okay, so let's do that and get rid of this and run this query. And there we go. So here's the, the computers that have the failed login happening on them uh, from 60 days ago to current and their OS and their version. So, hey, notice no Linux is appearing in the list here. So that's interesting. So it's all Windows computers that are having failed logins against them, all right? So that might be information you wanted to know about. Um, so that could be, again, one way of pulling this, this information out, okay? So let's do, uh, let's do one more um, before we wrap up this video here. Um, let's do, and this one is uh, showing an example of where you're actually using the same table to do a join against. So you can join one version of the same table to another version of the same table. Okay, so, so this one here, let me maybe open up a new editor. Um, so this one here, I'm going to examine uh, the sign-in logs table. Okay, uh, let's maybe start off with a limit 10. Go ahead and run to that. And so with this, with sign-in logs, this is basically your sign-in activity uh, that has happened within Azure here. So you could see that there's a, a lot of information uh, that's gathered here. Uh, if you kind of scroll on through, right, there's, uh, yeah, there's a bit here. Okay, user type. Um, all right, so so you could see, you know, what accounts have logged into uh, uh, what accounts have logged into Azure here. So the identity. Um, I'm looking for. Um, yeah, the IP address the login came from. Um, so yeah, uh, user. You notice user display name, user ID, user principal name. So that's where the actual, like, you know, like some type of system account versus an actual user account and whatnot, right? Okay, so that's got that information. Now let's say um, I wanted the information, uh, the sign-ins, because notice there is a time generated, right? So if I wanted all of the sign-ins, uh, let's first of all, how big of a table is this? Let's do a count. How many records are in here? Uh, oop, last 24, right? So it's not showing me its whole thing here. Um, so if I were to do, I don't know, maybe last seven days, what's the count in that? So seven days gives me 8,000 records, right? And if I want to do a custom, Let's maybe go back all the way to, I don't know, the beginning of May, 
right, and run it, and that's probably, yeah, 180,000 uh, sign-ins here. So depending on the size of your environment, that might be a rather large table. So let's say I want to find the sign-ins uh, that have occurred in, let's say, I don't know, maybe the last, um, uh, maybe the last 180 days. Can I, can I get that? Let's see. So let's start it because uh, I basically what I want to do is I want the sign ins that have happened today and compare them against the sign ins that have happened for the last 180 days and see if there's a difference. See if there's some account that logged in today that hasn't logged in in the last 180 days. So like you're looking for things that are different, things that are that are new or or. or or strange, I guess, if you will. So who logged in today that hasn't logged in in like the last 90 days or last 180 days, something like that. So that means I need to, first of all, get the sign-ins that have happened um, in the last uh, 90 or 180 days, okay? So first of all, I need a time span to kind of do that, right? So I can, uh, if I want to start, let's maybe, let's do a print so I can show you what this looks like. Let's do a print of, uh, let's do start of day, and let's say start of day, I want to use a time span, so that was a go, and that would be uh, maybe 180. All right, let's try that. Uh, and let's run to that, and let's see if that actually spits out. Yep, cool. So 180 days ago was 3-15-2022. Um, 180 days ago when I'm recording this video, it's 9-11, uh, 2022, um, that I'm recording this video on. So this was 180 days ago, okay? So could I uh, use that to get the sign-ins that are that old and newer? Sure, okay? So I could uh, go ahead and throw that up as a where. Uh, so let's do where. Uh, time generated is greater than, and let's grab this guy right here. Okay, and let's, uh, I don't want to see all of these, so let's just pipe it over to count. Oops, I can type. Let's pipe that over to count, and let's make sure we got some stuff going here. Okay, so that's 183,294. All right. Now, of that output, I don't need all of the sign-in table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a project to specify just what, uh, what maybe properties I want to see. So maybe I want user, uh, user principal name and maybe the, uh, you know, the app that was used, something like that. And let's make sure this looks right. Let's just limit to the first 10 output just to see if that looks clean. Okay, so that looks good, I think. Let's get the limit 10 out of there. And so that would be our, our left table. So this, this data here would be representing now what would and ultimately be my left table. So now let's figure out what the right table is going to look like. Um, so the right table is, again, still going to be the sign-in logs. And we're still going to be doing a filter. Okay, so sign and logs were time generated. Let's do the start of day. And let's use, instead of the ago uh, um, operator, let's do now. Okay, so the start of day for whatever today is. Um, and so that should spit out. Let me just make sure that that, let me show you that that works. So print start of day now, and then uh, that should spit out, yep, 9-11-2022. Okay, cool. So that works. So sign-ins here, and then let's make sure this is actually uh, spinning out a lesser number. So there's the sign-ins today. That's 330. Okay, so cool. So now... Um, now we want to incorporate um, our join here. So again, this is going to be the left table, and this is going to be the right table. And basically what I want here is I want to see the output 
I want to see the information that's in here that's not in here. So in other words, I want to see um, who is logged in today that has not logged in in the last 180 days. So that would be an account that's, that's let's say, brand new, if you will. Um, or an account that someone's using that they haven't used in the past like six months. Okay, maybe that's something I want to pay attention to. Like, hey, why is someone trying to log in with this account when it's never been logged in for logged in within the last 180 days? All right, so something like that. Okay, so let's uh, let's set this up um, as a join here. So let's uh, bring this down to one line. Um, so we'll do pipe, we'll do the join. Uh, let's bring this up here, right? And put this in parentheses. Yeah, it's gonna be another big set of parentheses right there. Um, okay, and what are we matching up on? So let's do on uh, user, user principal name. All right, and let's see if that, uh, Oh, and we want, again, we need a, a certain kind of join, right? So looking at our kinds of joins, I want the matches that occur. So I want to know, um, I want the information from the right table that uh, does not appear in the left table. Right, so I want so I want information from the right uh, that does not have a match in the left, based on user principal name. So I want users that have logged in in the last like today that have not logged in in the last 180 days. So so that's going to be a specific kind of join. Uh, so I want kind equals um, right anti. Right, so, so that's what I want to see. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that. Uh, no result found in, and, and again, I'm just doing this demo live. I don't know if I'm actually going to get results. So maybe no one knew. Let's maybe bump this down to 90 days. And I'm getting no results there as well. Um, Let's see. Okay, maybe also let's pay attention to um, uh, what also what app was being used. Let's do app display name. And no result. Okay, so let's. Uh... So we had greater than start of day now. I go 90 days. And uh, yeah, we're still striking out. Hmm. Let's see. How can we potentially fix this? Okay. So let's see. Oh, geez. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay. So. This one here, um, again, we're kind of doing this where uh, we're doing right and time, right? So, so I need, I want to show uh, results here that are not over here. And that means I need to take uh, this original sign in and I need to make it show results that don't include today. All right, so I want to see people have logged in today that have not logged in in the previous, let's say, 90 days. So that means I need a better where over here. So let's do where uh, that and uh, time generated would be less than um, the start of the day. Let's go grab that. All right, and now, cool, now we're getting some results. All right, very good. 
Uh, so let's go now, let's maybe go back to our 180 and let's see if we get results with that. Um, cool, so we are getting some results there. Um, let's see, result type, I only want successes. So that's result type of zero. So let me go ahead and filter this output. So where result type equals zero. And cool, that's getting a list for me. And uh, let's maybe, let's say I don't want all that output. So maybe we'll use a project and we'll start with uh, maybe time generated, right? It's always good to have that. Uh, user principal name, uh, maybe the app, oops, the app display name, um, and let's see what else, app display name, uh, what else might be fun info to include? Uh, do I have the IP address, for instance? Okay, cool, I've got that. And do I want anything else? Uh, maybe the user agent, maybe? Right. So let's do, um, so let's do IP address and user agent. All right, let's run. There we go. So that's all the accounts that have um, logged in today that have not logged in in the previous 90 days or, or the previous 180 days. So these are all new logins that we have not seen before in the past six months. So that's in this case using a join um, where you're doing the same table. Right, except you're making the table show different information. So this is showing up here, this is showing sign-ins that were from yesterday all the way back to 180 days in the past. And then this sign-in is showing uh, logins that occurred today. Okay, and then comparing the two. So show me what's in the right table that's not in the left table. All right, so that's what this is up to, right? So that's uh, that's having a look at, at uh, using joins in Azure, uh, looking at the different uh, flavors of joins, how we do a join, and a couple practical examples here of using different tables that you'll find in Azure. Again, if you don't have your own uh, log analytics workspace to play around with, feel free to use um, the Azure demo environment. Um, again, that was uh, aka.ms forward slash LA demo uh, is where you find the, the demo environment that I'm using here. And, uh, and yeah, doing the different joins and a couple practical examples here. So hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, and we will see you in the next video. So have a good day, everybody.